Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge. So, Lauren, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. Well, not only do you have a, just a great, great, energetic uh, bunch of incredible artists backing you up, but your voice is incredible. <laughs> Thank you, you know, so and much. Some people who uh, who wake up in the morning and th- think they, oh, I have party girl voice. Right. Or I, I'm real raspy today. Yeah. Well, you know, you sound <laughs> great. You sound. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It, it's with or without the party. Yeah. That's where we're standing. <laughs> yeah. You're there no matter what. <laughs> my my vocal coach always laughs and says, Lauren, you know that you're you're talking like lower than a man. Like just talk a little higher. <laughs> Why? <No. laughs> well, you know, because it's supposed to be better for your voice or something. Oh. Oh. I'm like, cool. oh, okay, I'll talk like this. No, don't do that. <laughs> Please Never. don't do that. Uh, okay, you say, fantastic song. Oh, thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Uh, and I know that when your album came out, you debuted way up. Was it the album or the single that debuted at the top of the Billboard chart? Like number three. Yeah, the album. Okay, so you're, uh, mm-hmm. you're an artist. You uh, Your boyfriend just walked in, by the way. Oh, my gosh. You look so handsome today. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Let me give you a kiss. Uh, get over here. Don't make out on my show. <laughs> <laughs> to be, be an artist and release an album. And I know there, there's anxiety. There's frustrations. I'm putting a piece of art out, and we're just yeah. hoping someone likes it, you know? And it debuts at number three? <laughs> yeah. What a morning that was. I was, I was blown away. And it was like, it wasn't that it was just at number three. Paul McCartney and Eminem were who I was next to. I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> what is happening? I think we did about like a million victory laps within that one week. Probably lost 20 pounds just running around the Good room. Good for you. I'm kidding. It was just, it was unreal. And, uh, unreal. and if you're a fan of American contemporary Christian music, you, you are very familiar with Lauren Daigle. Here's my issue with saying the uh, category of American contemporary Christian or the category of hip hop or the, mm-hmm. we put music into these corrals. Yeah. And uh, for instance, you know, the station you're listening to right now isn't a corral. It's a format, yeah. which I totally don't believe in. I hate that. That's why we love having country artists up mm-hmm. here, having you here today, you know, being able to mix it up because music is music. Yes. What, that's does music, what I believe. what does music mean to you? Like go, go deep. Oh. Where's your foundation? Uh, how was your foundation built with music? With music. Well, when I was a little girl, my dad would play this game called the dollar game and every, it, he was smart. Because he loved classic rock music. And so when we would get in the car, we'd be like, let's play some hip hop. And he'd be like, huh, let's play some classic rock. And so to get his way, he would say, let's play the dollar game. And if we could guess the song, he would give us a dollar. If it was really hard, he'd give us five dollars. Wow. And what that did was it really trained my ear. I was started to listen to just little vocal nuances and, you know, how did the guitar sound with those drums? Oh, yeah, that's a different guitar part. Wow. You know, and so Led Zeppelin, Journey, all these things. But then you switch over to the soul aspect of things and you got Aretha and Etta and all these beautiful powerhouse women. And I I think I just grew up with an array of sound in my ears. And that's what I want to communicate through music. I'm with you. Like the genres, let's not be so bound to the genre. Let's just communicate with music that is powerful and transformative. And I think that, that, that also can apply to people as well. Because yeah. I know that you uh, you appeared on Ellen DeGeneres' yeah. show. Yeah. And people gave you flack. Yeah. For, how dare you hang out with a lesbian, this and that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> she's white? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I like, what? Wait, nobody told me this. No, what? <laughs> no, but but you, you so brilliantly came back and said, well, here's my feeling. Yeah. About corralling people into these, you can or cannot yes. connect with them. You Attitudes. Really yeah. What, yeah. Did you, what, what did you say? I just like, said, you know, the love of God is not subjective to the way people live. So no one can be hindered from his love. Why would I do that? In life, in the Bible, in the gospel, from what I've read, he never separated people. That was the Pharisees, if you go back to it. Right. He always said, my love is for everyone. So I don't think we should build walls around who God is capable of loving and who he's not. And so that's kind of my viewpoint. When it comes to life, I just see people as people. I right. just want to love people like people. I want to give them everything that they need and truth that they need. And so it's true. God loves yeah. everyone except for this guy here, Scary. <laughs> oh, Scary! Hello. How you doing? You don't I'm, look very scary, though. So I'm well, confused. Well, he misspelled it. <laughs> By the way, if you're just turning us on, Lauren Daigle is here. She just gave us a, a tremendous performance. Oh. Speaking of, uh, uh, Carl Lentz has sat in this chair many really? times. Absolutely, wow. he's a friend of our show. Okay. And I, I love the fact that we can talk about anything and everything on our show, including yeah. spirituality, including uh, the, the love of scripture, this and that. Yes. And I'm not embarrassed to do it. No. But some people get frightened. It's like. <gasps> 
Oh, oh my gosh. Don't talk about something that could be good for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that weird totally. the world we live in? Yes. The three-letter word can be like 20 letters. <laughs> so wait. I was watching uh, Lauren Daigle online yesterday, and she introduced us to her new boyfriend. Here's what it sounded like. Yes. Breaking news. <laughs> We're in New York City. I have a boyfriend. <laughs> We swipe, and there's Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> oh, and he's in the studio with us today. You look, look at that. so good. Look at that hair. I know. Oh We're rocking like the backwards mullet. <laughs> <You're like that. laughs> do you, do you uh, rely on social media a lot to stay connected with your fans? Yes. Or, yeah. Yep. That is definitely one way. Um, the other way, I love, this is so funny, but we do Q&A. And typically, you know, artists are like, oh, gosh, this is the place. I'm like, ugh. I love it. I right. love, because I get to talk to them. Like, I get to actually engage, not just over this digital format, but in real life and in person. That's my favorite thing. See, a lot That's of people don't under, understand that you know, when your artist you love, you go to see them in concert, they don't have, they can't stop down and talk to everyone because right. they've got to mm-hmm. get on the stage and, you know. Yeah. But when you're on social media, you do it at your pace and you're yes. you're always there. So if you're a fan of Lauren Daigle, you should always follow her and say, hey, oh, what's up? And just on. ask her a question. Ask her it, the more embarrassing, the better. <laughs> yeah, they try to get me with that embarrassing stuff. I have, I don't think I get embarrassed in life very easily. Good. We're going to put that to the so, test now. I know. I'm like, so we should come up with a game for all those social media people do out that. there. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> do you mean. tell me your most embarrassing story. <laughs> <laughs> right. You want to curl some hair? <laughs> so these are my girlfriends. This is Gandhi. Hello, Hello this Gandhi. This is Danielle. Beautiful. Hey, Danielle. Danielle and I have worked together for 22 years mm-hmm. on this show. Wow. Gandhi, yeah. Gandhi just arrived here maybe a half year ago. Yep. Oh, Six that's awesome. Exactly. Already... You have a great synergy. I was listening out there. Aww. Yeah, it's beautiful. We like each other. I can tell. <laughs> we know that at the end of the day, we're stuck with each other, so we can say anything and everything to each yep. other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where are you from originally? Originally Louisiana. Yeah, what part? The Deep South. Yeah. Lafayette and Baton Rouge. Lafayette and Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Yeah, my aunt, my aunt Paula lives there. We always, oh, we always loved aunt Paula. aunt Paula because she she was an aunt. We looked up to her, but she had the craziest gas problems. Oh, no. I mean, we were little kids. Aunt Paula farted. It was oh, the funniest is it like, thing. Is it the red beans and rice, Could though? Have been. Yeah, maybe it's because we pound that stuff all the time. I know. People are so gassy in Baton Rouge. Well, anyway, I don't want to leave the interview on that note. Uh, where, do we, where do we see you next? What do you do? What, what's coming up that you're really charged up about? Oh, we're going to Europe. Oh, wow. I'm like, what in the world? I, so the only place in Europe I've ever been is Italy. It was unreal. Italy's amazing. Italy is unbelievable. And we're going to, we're going to have a show here at Radio City Music Car Hall. Yeah. Har, har, har. Have you ever played Radio City? No. It's a beautiful room. Yeah. I am blown away. We sold Radio City out in a day. Wow. Oh, it took you a whole day? I know. Oh. Stop. It wasn't an <laughs> hour. Sad. There are, I will tell you, I know a lot about Radio City Music Hall. There are ghosts. That are, Yay. that are creeping and crawling Ooh. and slithering around that place. So look out. Okay, I'll be on the lookout. Yeah. All right. But so, okay, so Europe. You're taking you're taking the tour to Europe? Yes. We're going to Berlin. We're going to London, Paris, Amsterdam. It's going to be awesome. Good for you. I can't wait. Well, look, Lauren Daigle, support any and every way you can. Of course, you say the latest single from Lauren Daigle. And uh, we are so happy and so pleased that you came in today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having Lauren me. Lauren Daigle. Honored to be here.